Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to do an underpainting and we're going to start this first project by painting a pumpkin. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to want to do is tone our canvas. So over here with my big palette here, I've got um, a big brush. This is the one that I'm going to use to be toning the canvas with. And I have a tube of my... Um, this is burnt umber, but uh, you can use raw umber for this as well. And I also have my container of Gamsol. Uh, I have some Gamsol in here. This is for uh, when I'm cleaning my brushes, um, but this is the clean stuff. So this is what I'm going to be using to thin out this paint, which is going to let us do a, uh, a tone, put a tone over our canvas. So um, just to get started, I'm going to put out a little bit of my burnt umber paint or again, it could be raw umber. Everything that we do is gonna be in this one color right now. So it's a monochromatic painting, meaning we're not gonna be applying any actual color chroma. Okay, so I have a little bit of Gamsol in here. I'm gonna to try to just put a little bit here on the side. So you have to be careful with this, right? Um, if you look, I've just kind of put a little bit there. I might put just a, a little bit more Okay, so about that much. And what I'm going to do is just kind of take this big cheap brush I have here and kind of saturate it a little bit with some of that Gamsol. And then I'm going to start bringing a little bit of the paint into this. Okay, so this part is a little tricky because we're trying to figure out the right consistency. Um, and we want something that's kind of a little bit watery, but we don't want it to be too runny and watery either at the same time. So it's something that you'll kind of figure out with more experience as you paint. But yeah, we're trying to get kind of a soupy consistency here. Now if you want, you could take your palette knife here and actually kind of mix this with the, uh, the Gamsol with the paint, and that will make the paint itself just kind of thinner overall. Um, I'm doing this with a brush just because um, I guess it's a little quicker and more convenient for me. Okay, so that's, that's quite a bit of Gamsol I put out now. So I just did it carefully. I didn't want to put out too much right away. Um, but I, I feel like this is going to be good to get started. All right, so I'm going to go to my canvas now and start applying this. Okay, and you're just going to kind of scrub it in and keep applying a little bit of this Gamsol and paint mixture as you go. And we're going to try to basically just cover the whole canvas. Okay, so I've got all the paints covering the canvas now. Um, it's not very even though, so what we want to do is take a paper towel and we're just going to kind of rub down the whole thing. And uh, what this will do is kind of get some of the, um, the drippiness to go away because we're going to be kind of pulling off some of the Gamsol from the canvas. So that'll absorb some of that wetness. Um, and at the same time, this is going to kind of spread our paint around so that we can get this tone to be nice and even. So you can kind of just go from side to side, up and down. And just kind of try to do this until the tone is pretty even. If you have some streaks across the canvas, it's okay. It's not a big deal. But we want to try to get this fairly smooth. And uh, one question I get a lot from my students is, um, you know, questions about how dark or light this tone should actually be. Okay, so this is kind of up to you, actually. But we want something to be, um, we, want the, we want the paint to kind of be at like a middle tone. So not too, too dark, not too light. But um, I would say that if you had to err on the side of one or the other, I would maybe go a little bit darker than a little bit too light. It kind of depends on what it is you're painting. If, uh, if you're painting something that has more of a, a dark background, then you might want your initial tone to be a little darker. If it has more lighter backgrounds, you might want to go a little bit lighter. But we are trying to get something that's kind of in the middle. Um, so yeah, I think like a middle gray, not too bright, not too dark. 
um, but maybe a little closer to the dark side than the light side. Okay, um, so I am just using my brush here. I, I kind of wiped it off with a paper towel so it's dry. And I'm just kind of using this to sort of help smooth out the tone that's on my canvas a little bit more. Try to keep it a little more even. Um, I also, I, the paper towel I used to lay in this tone kind of shed a bit. Um, so there's little kind of little spots here that um, kind of formed up from like little pieces of lint from the paper towel. Um, it, it's not a big deal, but if you don't want to have those there, um, I would recommend using a blue shop vac, or uh, sorry, a, a blue shop towel, instead of using like your regular uh, kitchen paper towels, because the the kitchen ones they'll they'll probably um, rub off onto your canvas and create that um, that little those little lint pockets everywhere. Um, you can also use a maybe a t-shirt if you want to an old t-shirt as a rag, and you can also use that to rub this down. Um, if it doesn't bother you, then then don't worry about it. Okay, so that's toning the canvas, and um, now that we've done that, I can uh, we, begin, we can begin to actually draw out the pumpkin, and then uh, we'll begin to build in the tonal structures, and then we'll refine from there. Okay, so now we want to start to get the drawing of our pumpkin. Um, I'm going to do a switch brushes first. So this is a um, number eight uh, Treckle Legion Synthetic Mongoose Hair uh, Flat Brush. Okay, so the size is eight. Um, it's in the uh, 9100 FL series. Um, so FL, I guess, flat long. Um, so it's a long flat. Okay, and the flats are really good for doing your, your initial line drawing because um, instead of going kind of this way with the brush, we're going to kind of scrape across this way and it'll get us nice thin lines. Okay, so just kind of using the uh, paint and the, the kind of Gamsol that I have here, I'm just going to start kind of grabbing a little bit of paint here. Um, you actually, for this part, you might want to work a little bit more dry because if, if you have too much thinner in this brush, you're just going to kind of pull off paint from your canvas. So don't put too much. Um, I have like a little bit of Gamsol from here that I'm kind of putting in the brush, but mostly I'm going to be putting the paint on pretty dry. So I'm just going to take some paint from here, kind of drop it off over here, and I'm loading up the brush. So I'm kind of trying to get paint on the brush by kind of, you know, pushing this in on both sides. And then I'm going to take and just kind of scoop a little bit too, right on the tip there, so that I have a... Well, actually, probably for this part, you don't have to do that. But a lot of times when we paint, we're going to be scooping up paint off of the... Uh, palette so that we get nice thick globs of paint, but this is a thinner thing. So um, we don't have to We don't have to put so much paint on the brush Okay, so um, when I'm Setting up for painting this pumpkin. Um, I want to consider that there's a cast shadow that's going to drag off to the left All right, so I want to make kind of room for that um, if the cast shadow pulls off to the left it may end like way about right about here and uh, the pumpkin itself on the, the right edge might be about here. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm drawing kind of an envelope shape. Okay, so enveloping is kind of using straight lines to connect uh, certain parts of your painting together, so um, or like a particular object. So um, in this case, it's the like the pumpkin is going to kind of fit here. Um, I am projecting that the stem is going to end up here somewhere and the cast shadow drags on this way. So if I just kind of outline the whole thing with straight lines, to me it looks kind of something like that. Um, you'll notice that um, in certain places around here, it's kind of like it's lightening up a little bit. So what's happening there is the brush is actually picking up some of the tone from the canvas. Okay, so this happens when you start running out of paint on the brush uh, or if you have too much Gamsol in your brush. So um, if, you're, if you're doing this and your lines are turning white, um, Maybe what you need to do is kind of rub this down again. Make sure that this is a little bit more dry. Maybe maybe you still have too much Gamsol on the canvas, um, or you know maybe you put too much Gamsol on your brush. Right. So um, think you just you just need uh, basically the paint dry on the brush, and make sure you're always kind of loading up the paint so that there's always paint on the brush. And if you start running out of paint, just just add more. Right. Um, 
And the cool thing about the envelope is that I can kind of expand the shape or shrink it down as needed. Um, what I kind of look for here is the margins around the edges. I try to make sure that the margins from the, uh, the bottom to the top are even and the margins on the side are pretty even. Um, I like a nice kind of comfortable space around what I'm drawing. So, um, um, you know, it's, it's not going right to the edges of the canvas. Um, so I can give myself a little bit of space, uh, breathing room in case like my uh, drawing kind of grows a little bit. Um, but at the same time, we, we want to kind of draw this as big as we can while still having some margins around the sides. Um, you don't want to draw your pumpkin like this small on this huge canvas. That doesn't make any sense. So, um, okay, so I'm going to go back to kind of my drawing. And again, I think the, the stem's going to kind of go here. I'm probably going to pull the side of the pumpkin out a little bit further on this side. And I think probably the other side of the pumpkin is going to go here. Okay, so I'm kind of slowly with just straight lines trying to kind of map out the shape of the pumpkin that I am going to be putting here. And um, so I'm just kind of like gently kind of laying the paint down onto the canvas. Um, so I'm not, I'm holding my brush pretty gently um, and I'm just kind of like dragging the brush ever so gently across the canvas. And again, I'm using um, a swiping motion this way, not going kind of against the flat edge of the brush because uh, I don't want these big, thick, heavy lines right now. I just want these to be nice and thin. Okay, so I, I think this is going to be the shape of the pumpkin. Um, it's, it's longer than it is tall, that's for sure. And then uh, kind of starting sort of in the middle area of the pumpkin here and kind of buried inside of it, um, we're going to have that stem coming out. So I'm going to kind of start here with these edges that the stem kind of falls behind. And then uh, the stem kind of S-curves its way up to here. So it's a little lower than where I was kind of initially thinking it would go. Um, if I really, really insisted on that stem going all the way up to here, I could adjust all the proportions, but I'm, I'm close enough. So I think that um, we're probably fine here. So again, I'm, I'm just using straight lines. This is a straight line construction. So even though the pumpkin is, is very round, right? Um, obviously, uh, I'm, I'm simplifying and I'm kind of doing the whole curve with a, with a series of straight edges rather than one big curve. And uh, part of the reason to do this is uh, just to kind of force me to look at the shape a little bit more carefully. Um, because there are actually flat edges on things, you know, like this isn't really just one smooth, um, continuous curve. So everything's going to be drawn with straights here. Okay, so I think that's kind of the outline of the pumpkin. Um, there is that cast shadow that I have to draw still. So I'm going to start that. I'm, I'm paying really close attention to kind of where this actually emerges from underneath the pumpkin. So um, it's definitely kind of off to the right here relative to, say, where the stem is. Um, and it's going to kind of pull kind of down and out and then swing across this way. So be careful with your cast shadow here because a lot of people, they make um, the space between where the bottom of the form is and this edge of the cast shadow too big. Like people will do this big oval shape and it's not really that big and circular. Um, we're just a, kind of a narrow space from here to here. Okay, so I'm pulling this ellipse out, paying attention to the angle from here to the edge of my cast shadow. So I'm probably going to be pulling this cast shadow a little further than where um, I initially thought it was going to be. So you see the envelope isn't always necessarily perfect in the beginning. It's just kind of a start. So you adjust things as you go as needed. Um, one thing that you might want to notice here as you're drawing this edge of the ellipse, um, I, I mentioned earlier paying close attention to how actually close or far away this, these two edges are. Uh, when you bring this around, pay really close attention to where exactly this is intersecting on the pumpkin. Is it up here, at kind of like the midpoint of the pumpkin? Is it way up here, higher than the halfway point, or is it a little bit lower? How low is it? How high is it? Right, pay attention to that. It's really important. Um, because if you make this in, uh, too circular, it's going to mess up the perspective and things won't look right. Okay, so we've got the basic outline of the pumpkin. We've got the outline of the cast shadow. So now what I'm going to do is, um, in a real simple way, I'm going to outline the 
core shadow edge, right? The dividing line between light side and shadow side. Now there's a lot of uh, squigglies kind of going around here where the core shadow kind of goes up and down, up and down. But in general, um, with the light kind of coming in from the upper right, we'll have a core shadow that kind of goes from here to here on a slight curve. And this time I'm using kind of the side of the, or you know, the flat part of the brush because I kind of want a softer line here. Okay, so kind of about where the cast shadow begins right here. And uh, right as we get to the kind of the crest of this curve right here, uh, this is where it starts. So we go from here to here. Okay, so um, initially I kind of draw this as though uh, it's more of like a tomato than a pumpkin. Right, so I'm, I'm avoiding the temptation to go and do all the lines and stuff right now. The, uh, the lines that go up and down the pumpkin, um, a lot of those are going to be defined by the shape of the cast shadow as this kind of turns into uh, shapes that kind of go up and down and up and down. Okay. So um, I'm going to draw a couple more things though. A few of those lines actually wouldn't be a bad thing to include into the drawing. So um, I'm gonna, there's one that's kind of pretty strong right here. And so I'm going to kind of start to draw this. It kind of starts really at the stem area. So um, kind of like right about here relative to kind of how the stem is, there's the, the kind of start of this curve. It kind of peaks up really quickly and then starts to kind of curve down, turns into this curve, and eventually it falls um, underneath the bottom of the pumpkin here. There's a line that kind of starts here. It's not a perfectly straight line. It kind of squiggles out a little bit to the right and then uh, around to the left and then back to the right and eventually finds its way into the core shadow here. Um, if we go to the right of this initial curve I started with, there's a couple more um, little small curves that start to form. Um, you can omit some of the less important ones, like there's a couple just thin cuts, but right here, this is kind of a big form that we're seeing. Notice the overlap of this edge over this one. And this curve eventually becomes a part of the outer contour outline. So it's, it's what becomes uh, this curve right here. And behind that, there's kind of another curve. This sort of starts basically where the stem is, almost where the stem is. <clears throat> and this pops up and over and falls down behind this edge right here. Okay, so notice the overlaps of all these forms, right? Really important that you get the overlaps right. <clears throat> okay, so um, from the center-ish kind of line here, there's another segment. Um, now you'll see a lot of little lines here, but look for the big ones, right? There's a curve that kind of starts to form out from here that drives down into the core shadow. Um, it kind of keeps going in the core shadow, so I'm gonna kind of keep dragging it down until it curves under. Um, and you wanna kind of look at how much space is here versus how much space is here, right? and try to get that as accurate as possible. Um, I'm actually gonna move mine over a little bit because now that I'm paying attention to that myself, um, I feel like the space is a little closer than what I originally had. Now, if you have to erase anything, I have Q-tips here. Um, so we can use these to kind of uh, pull away lines that we don't want. Right? But, but don't, you don't have to worry about this right now um, because we actually need to keep that tone on the canvas. Right? We will use those Q-tips a little later though to lift out lights. It's going to be a lot like drawing on a paper, like on a, on a paper that you tone with charcoal and uh, how we kind of use the eraser to lift out the lights. So this whole process is like the, the wet version of that. It's like the same thing. Um, so there's, an, there's another big curve that comes out here. It's kind of like right as the stem kind of gets overlapped by this curve right here, uh, we see another curve popping out. And this is the one that becomes the left outer contour edge. Notice I'm always paying very close attention to where these points of intersection happen relative to the stem because I kind of started with that and everything is kind of being worked around that, that stem uh, shape. Okay, so there's uh, one last little curve in the back here um, and I'm simplifying it into one arc like this, even though there's sort of like a double curve to that. 
Okay. So that's a pretty good line drawing. Um, it's very preliminary. So from here, we're going to have to go in and um, start modifying some of the core shadow shapes, and we'll start blocking in the shapes of the stem um, and start filling those in a little bit. Uh, one last thing maybe we can do before we jump into that is just kind of gently and lightly find the back edge of the wall here. Again, pay close attention to where this intersects with the pumpkin and how much space you have from the cast shadow. And as this drags across, really project through so that these two ends align. Okay, now let's go in and start adjusting some of our shapes on this core shadow, because right now it's just a simple curve, but it's gonna contour and change to, uh, to contour to some of these, these big shapes that are kind of going through the pumpkin. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit more paint on the brush again. And uh, this time I'm going to kind of squint my eyes a little bit and try to see bigger trends first. There's a lot of little things going on here that I want to maybe not focus on right away, but get to later. Um, so if you squint your eyes a little bit, it makes it a little easier for you to see some of these uh, shapes that are kind of big and important, but sometimes we overlook them and we see other small details instead. Uh, this kind of keeps your eye on the bigger shapes, the ones that are more important. And when you squint, some of the smaller details that aren't quite as important, they, they generally tend to kind of fade out a little bit. So this is a way of helping you kind of simplify and uh, get what's important in your painting and, and not get distracted by things that are less important. Okay, and by kind of uh, squinting a little bit to sort of like zoom out your perspective a little bit on what you're painting, uh, which can also be a little bit helpful. We always want to at first take sort of a zoomed out approach to our paintings so that we're not focusing on little small details, but um, the, the broader whole. Okay, so see I've kind of made some of the adjustments here. One thing um, you might want to look at and notice here is there, there's this kind of shape that dips down where the core shadow hits its lowest point before it climbs up this little edge. Where that happens is directly horizontally across from the uh, cast shadow on the ground. Right, there's an alignment here um, that's called a plumb line. So use, use plumb lines like that to make sure that your drawing is correct. Okay, this aligns with that. Okay, so I'm going to go up this edge now. Um, notice, you know, when I hold the pencil, I, I usually don't do this. This is how you write. Um, I kind of hold it more how I draw with charcoal pencil, so it's a little bit overhand. I like to have a little bit of give so this can wiggle around a little bit. And um, it just kind of keeps you from like kind of driving the brush into the canvas. <coughs> so you just kind of like gently laying down paint all the time. Okay, so that's kind of the sharper left edge of this form. The, the core shadow kind of comes down like this. And again, I'm squinting my eyes so I can kind of get the simple version of the shape because I don't want to get distracted too much with like the little small things that aren't as important. Um, there is another kind of like superficial kind of groove in this thing right here. So I'm going to kind of add that in. The, uh, the light from this is going to kind of drag down to a point here and then the shadow peaks up here. Um, and that happens to go a little bit higher than where the background wall is. And then uh, this comes back down again. So none of this is really a line. It's, it's really a shape. It's like a, a triangle. So there's one edge on the left that's coming up to a point, and then it comes down to the right and expands out this way. Um, lines don't really exist in nature. We kind of invented that as human beings. So what we're doing is um, we're actually looking for shapes and edges. Um, I'm, I'm going to move this edge out just a little bit because uh, at first I didn't really account for this little part of the shape that kind of does this. So there's a little bit more space between these two, so I'm just kind of adjusting that. And the core shadow does continue here, although it gets really hard to see it because the reflected light that comes off of the ground is starting to kind of flood into the core shadow. So um, that's the outline of, the, or the more, uh, the more um, complex version of the shadow shape. So 
Um, I have the shadow outline for the cast shadow plus the shadow side of the form itself. Um, there's one more uh, set of shadows I want to get here, and uh, this is the shadows from the stem. So there's one very small, hard to see kind of cast shadow up here. And then um, it, it kind of like rolls up this, this curve a little bit. So it's going to be like right about here. Um, and then the stem itself has light and shadow on it as well. So um, right here, there's kind of like a diagonal uh, cast shadow from this part of the stem onto the lower part. And it runs into a core shadow here where now we're kind of transitioning into uh, shadow from the light. Um, and on the top, we get a um, so kind of like the top part of the stem is in light. And the right side is kind of in shadow, or uh, the right side's in light also, until eventually this runs into this edge right here. Um, there's a little small piece of light right here too. Uh, but basically all, most of the stem is gonna fall into shadow. So I'm just trying to outline the edges where the light separates from the shadow. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is kind of fill this tone in a little bit. Um, now I'm gonna switch over now to a different brush. So I was using the eight. Um, this is the Treckle 10 flat brush. So I'm um, gonna use that. If your brush is really stiff, just kind of uh, move it around until it kind of loosens up a little bit. So I'm gonna like kind of just brush a little bit of the Gamsol onto the brush and then um, start grabbing some of the paint. So um, again, you want to kind of mostly, you're, you're mostly dry brushing this. So don't, don't get like too soupy and wet. Um, in fact, you might even want to wipe this off onto your paper towel or whatever to kind of make it a little bit less, um, a little less wet and goopy. So I usually do wet the brush just a little bit when I start to use it, but this, this one you want it to be more dry than wet. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over now to my painting and start filling in this tone. And I'm just gonna kind of scrub this in a little bit. Um, grab more paint as needed. You know, you don't really know if you have too much or not enough paint on your brush until you start putting it down. And we're just gonna kind of spread this around a little bit. Um, if when you put paint and tone down like this, if it's really streaky, it's because uh, you have too much Gamsol in your mixture. You know, your paint is too thin. Um, so if you want it to be nice and smooth, think more like you're dry brushing this. You know, so not really very much Gamsol in your paint mixture. You don't want your brush to be too wet. And that, that will allow you to get kind of a smoother, more even tone here. So I'm using the transparency of the paint to kind of control the amount of darkness that happens here. Um, now this, this cast shadow is gonna actually eventually get pretty dark, but um, I always like to start a little bit lighter with the shadows and then I can always darken them from there. Um, I don't wanna have to really wipe off any paint after the fact if I can help it. Um, so everything kind of starts in the middle and we work out to the extremes of light and dark. So, um, right, the tone itself of the canvas was in the middle to begin with. So now I'm adding my darks kind of slowly. Uh, on the light side, we'll eventually be using Q-tips and paper towels to lift out some of the highlights here. But a lot of what's in the lights is already at the tone that it's gonna be at. Okay, so continuing to uh, build paint into my cast shadow. Right, everything under here is going to be getting probably a little bit darker. So um, if you're starting to get really, really dark under here, that's probably fine. It's going to be that way eventually anyway. And we kind of pull that under the pumpkin this way. Um, keep in mind, this, this shape is a kind of a full elliptical shape all the way through. So. In your mind's eye, try to kind of project that this curve right here is connecting to this end of the curve here. So it's all one big thing. Um, that will help you so that you don't like kind of make this curl around too fast and then your shadow ends up way up here. Um, it's just an oval, like a, like a nice elliptical shape. And there are little lumps and bumps along this edge that we'll, we'll add in later, um, but we're not gonna do it quite yet. Um, we, we slowly build the details in. Um, if you haven't already noticed, we, we start very simple and then we build in the complexities as we go. Okay, so that's the cast shadow. Um, I'm gonna go in here and kind of fill in the shadow side of the um, pumpkin. And um, it's okay to kind of let these lines go away. Like I have some of these lines that started up here, I went into the shadows. I'll bring them back. So 
once they if they disappear, it's not like I can't re-find uh, those again. So don't obsess about trying to keep all those details and those lines. The lines aren't really the most important thing here. It's the, really the shape of that of that core shadow that's going to really tell us where the segments of the pumpkin divide. Um, and yeah, here, the, the shadow side of the pumpkin is going to be a little bit lighter than its cast shadow on the ground. So, um, and, and the core shadow is actually going to be the darkest edge here. So don't go too dark with this. Um, we can actually go here and start to actually bring these tones together if we want. Um, I think it's a little easier to just do this than to um, try to work it within this outline here. And then what we can do later is just as we darken the, the cast shadow, we'll reshape this later. So um, these two shadows can actually blend together in terms of their tone. Because right? we're basically doing a two-tone structure right now. So it's just, you know, the light side has the tone of the canvas. The shadow side has a unified uh, kind of dark but not black tone. And yeah, if you end up do, uh, putting down too heavy of a, of a um, tone anywhere, remember we can always lift out these tones. One of the cool things about oil painting is that it's extremely forgiving. So we can always fix mistakes. Okay, so we don't want to forget the stem. The stem is uh, mostly in shadow. So I'm going to start to fill in that tone. Okay, and then the um, last thing we're going to do here, and this is important, um, is we want to fill in the background tones as well, because the background is not white. Um, in fact, if we look here, the pumpkin is the lighter thing, the shadow, the, the background is the darker thing. Um, at certain points, the shadow on the pumpkin, like right here, is going to be darker than the background. So the background, we want it to be um, a little darker than the shadow side of the pumpkin, but definitely lighter than where it is right now, because it has to contrast on this side. So I'm actually going to start on that right side of the pumpkin, and I'm just like going to kind of pull some tone right off of the edge. I still have a little bit of uh, paint on my brush, so I'm just going to like use what's already on there. And um, it, at first, you don't have to bring this tone all the way to the edge of the canvas. What we want to do is, is kind of get this tone to go right up against the edge of the pumpkin. That way, the outline of the pumpkin goes away, and instead of being an outline, we just see an edge separating a lighter tone from a darker tone. Okay, and if you start running out of paint, just, you know, add more. There is a gradient to the background. It's slightly lighter on the right side, a little bit darker on the left side. So we are going to be transitioning um, kind of in anticipation of that. I think I'm going to darken this side of the pumpkin just a little bit. That way, as I build in the background tone here, um, the background tone can stay a little bit lighter than that, hopefully. Okay, so I'm going to kind of start to bring in the tones of the background here, right up against the edge of the pumpkin. And um, what I'm kind of trying to do here is almost like just take the outline of the pumpkin and drag it up into the background. Right, because really I'm just trying to erase this outline. And that does a pretty good job of doing that. Um, so right here, you know, again, we could just brush these two edges together so it's all one tone. We don't want to have a light halo around the edge, so um, it might actually be a good idea just to go ahead and let these unify, and then we can go back with a bit of paint later, and we can re-darken this edge, or we can lighten the background or do something like that to get the contrast 
but they're both kind of dark tones. So right now I'm just going to blend the two together. Okay, I have um, a background tone that really goes all around the entire pumpkin. So I've, I've really gone out of my way here to eliminate all of the outlines of the pumpkin. Um, there are some places like on the stem here where I've lost edges because the background and the stem, say for right here, um, they're, they're both dark. So um, at first I'm just kind of lumping them together, letting that edge kind of disappear there. And um, later on what I can do is start to um, find the value differences between uh, this and this, you know, um, I think the stem is going to be a little darker and the background will be a little lighter and that will create the edge difference and allow us to see that, that left edge that we lost. Um, where there's light that of course creates contrast against the background. Um, but again, where there's kind of shadow against background tone, um, you can kind of let these edges sort of disappear and we can always bring them back later. Now, um, for the rest of the background tone, you might want to switch over to your big brush again, because this little one is going to be um, just kind of a little slow going. I'm also going to pull out a little more of my paint because I'm starting to run out and um, the paint's starting to kind of dry up a little bit. So new fresh paint here. And uh, I'm not really adding Gamsol this time because again we're kind of thinking more like we're, we're dry brushing all this stuff so because the background is a really big area I'm using a bigger brush so you kind of want to switch brushes based on uh, the appropriateness of that size of brush relative to the um, area that you're painting so yeah if you're if you're working in a small area you want to work with a smaller brush if you're trying to paint a bigger area like big just background tones then you'll want to switch over to a bigger brush okay so whichever size of brush is appropriate for what you're doing at any given time so this will just be a lot faster okay um so and remember on the the right side here this is going to be a little bit of a lighter tone um, than it is on the um, on the left side because the light source is kind of coming in from the right. So as it hits the wall, it's a little bit lighter here. Um, and as it drags on, that light is going to fade slowly uh, into a darker tone. But I think every part of this wall, even the brighter part up here, is going to be a little bit darker than the tone that we started with. So I am still making sure to include a little bit of tone on here. Um, I'm never just letting it go into the tone of the canvas. Okay, so maybe a little hard to see here uh, because I know there's a little bit of glare. Um, if I turn it a little bit, I think you can kind of see that a little better. Um, so yeah, maybe what I can do for you guys is turn the panel a little bit. 
just so we can avoid the glare. Okay, so if you guys have glare problems and you have the, um, the glossiness of your paint on your canvas that's kind of obscuring what you're seeing, just kind of experiment with angling the lights or your canvas a little bit more so that um, you don't see the glare. And it's all about what direction that, that light is hitting your canvas and whether or not that light is bouncing back into your eye. Uh, I'm going to try though to keep this mostly straight because I don't want the angle of the canvas to um, mess up how the drawing looks so you guys can see how it's actually supposed to look. Um, but just for this part, just so you guys can kind of see without the glare, I am going to just kind of turn the canvas while I fill in the rest of this background tone. So this is all basically dry brush. Right? Dry brush technique is just what it sounds like. You know, you're using a dry brush um, and it's a lot of like scrubbing and kind of brushing in to get kind of soft edges and stuff and, and smooth tones. Um, the background edge right here, um, I'm going to intentionally leave this transition a little soft. So I don't want a really hard background edge there. I want it to be a little bit softer, more gradual, even though in the photograph, um, it looks a little more sharp than that. I want to keep it kind of soft because the idea there is like things that are closer to us are a little bit more in focus, so therefore should be more crisp, you know, things like the edges of the pumpkin. But the background being further away, um, you know, photography would usually have that be a little softer. So um, as a painter, I want to separate the space a little bit. So by kind of making this uh, edge here a little bit softer, it makes the background uh, edge here feel like it's, it's a little further back in the distance. And that'll contrast nicely against the sharper edges of the pumpkin. And that will give um, the viewer a little bit more of a visceral sense of the depth. Okay, and with the dry brush, you can just kind of very carefully in a very controlled way uh, create that softness there. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to switch back now to my smaller brush. This is the 10. And um, what I'm going to do is start darkening a couple things that need to be a little darker. Um, like for one thing, like the core shadow here um, is already a little bit darker than some of the interior of the shadow because we have core shadow and reflected light. So core shadows are going to be like the darker part. Um, but to make the uh, reflected light here feel a bit brighter, um, you could use Q-tips or paper towels and kind of lift up some of the lights. Like if I took a Q-tip here um, and went into the shadow, I could actually lift very gently some of this tone and create that little glow that's under there. But you got to be careful with this because you don't want your shadows to go too bright. If you, if you have too much of a reflective light glow in your shadow mass, then it's going to compete with the light mass. And it's very confusing to the viewer because it kind of looks like the light source is coming from not just the top, but also the bottom. So um, another way of kind of doing the same thing that I'm doing here is to just darken the cast shadow. Um, now I'm going to be doing both. I'm, I'm kind of lightening up the reflected light just underneath the pumpkin a little bit with the Q-tip, but I'm also going to be going in with my uh, brush and adding fresh paint here that's going to be a little bit darker than where I currently have it. And uh, the contrast of this darker tone in the cast shadow against this lighter tone in the uh, reflective light here is, gonna, is really going to make that reflective light glow. Okay, so instead of literally darkening or uh, lightening the reflective lights, I'm just darkening other things like that are around it. So if the core shadows go darker and the cast shadows go darker, it will make the reflective lights here look bright. It'll, it'll add that glow. Um, but depending on how dark this shadow is to begin with, you may need to um, do both. So on one end, you might be lifting out and lightening some of the tones here with a Q-tip. And at the same time, you might be going in here and darkening some of your uh, shadow tones with with actual paint. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go through and I, um, just kind of darken the entire cast shadow because uh, I can see here that's a, it's definitely darker than 
the lights that are in the shadow mass of the pumpkin. Um, and as I do that, I'm going to use a Q-tip here and kind of reshape this edge. Um, noticing too that the, the core shadow or the cast shadow is uh, sharper where it's closer to the object. Um, and along this edge, it's going to soften with more distance. So we'll start to see this soften a little bit over here. Um, and the, uh, the cast shadow is really sharp though on this side. Um, not razor sharp, but much sharper than it is going to be over here. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, grab my Q-tip. I have a whole bunch of these. I'm going to use a ton of them. Um, but for this uh, part here, what I want to do is try to use the Q-tip to kind of reshape the shadow edge a little bit. And this is where we get those little small bumps um, along the shadow edge. And this will also let us, uh, you, you can use this to kind of soften the shadow edge as well. So um, the paint, if it's still wet, you should be able to lift out these tones. Um, under painting like this, you have to work the whole thing in one sitting because once this dries, you can't really lift out the tones anymore. Right? So at that point, you have to work opaque with your um, lighter paints and stuff like that, which is not what we're doing here. So um, yeah, make sure you don't take like super long breaks while you're doing this because your paint will dry. And uh, we're actually using a pretty fast drying paint when we use these earth tones like burnt umber or raw umber. Um, the reason we're using them is because they're very, very fast drying. And these are under, under paintings, which use, means usually that we uh, will do color on the top. And because we want to make sure that our top layers dry faster than, or, or slower than our bottom layers, uh, we always wanna make sure that the faster drying paints are on the under layer, right? Otherwise, um, the the paint on the top will start to dry too fast. And if the painting underneath it, the underpainting dries slower, um, then you get cracking because the, the paint's still moving and, and um, shrinking and, and stretching on the uh, underneath layers. And then the top layer, if it's all dry and brittle while that's happening, then you, you get cracking. Okay, so, um, so yeah, notice how we did that. We got the softness of the core shadow along these back edges here. Um, and then I'm letting it kind of go a little sharper as they go under um, and, and move to the part that's right under the pumpkin. Um, and you can also see that we've gotten the shape here a little bit more accurate to what it looks like. So I'm starting to get some of those little details along the shadow edge. And uh, also we see that the darkness that we've applied to the cast shadow here has now created a lot of contrast against the pumpkin uh, reflective lights here. So now we, we see this edge again. Like at first we kind of got rid of it and now we just brought it back. Okay, so now that we've gotten this shadow a little bit more detailed, um, we have all of our background tones in, uh, we have the general tone filled in here. What I'm going to do is uh, just kind of go around and kind of soften and sharpen certain parts of the core shadow and uh, just kind of adjust a couple things there. Um, and then after that, what we'll do is we'll add some of the highlights and, uh, and work in some of the midtones in the light mass. Okay, so um, just kind of using 
my brush, I'm going to kind of clean off or wipe off a little bit of the paint that's on it. And um, now I'm now going to use that dry kind of cleanish brush here to soften along my core shadow edges. Okay, and by doing this, we're also um, kind of building in some of the mid-tones that are darker around that core shadow edge. So these are your transitional tones um, as we go out of the core shadow into the light mass. Okay, so right here, <clears throat> this line is actually a transition. Um, so it's it's not a thin line so much as it is a starting point for a tone that kind of drags uh, to the right this way into the light mass. So I'm trying to take that line and sort of use my brush, uh, my clean dry brush to kind of pull that off to the right. And uh, we kind of bring that into the light mass on this side here. Okay, so now it's just a tonal difference. Um, now it's a little dark, so I'm going to kind of take my Q-tip here and, and sort of use that to lighten up some of these parts over here. Um, but I still want to make sure that that feels like a soft uh, transition so it kind of rolls out that way. Um, this edge right here has to go away, so I'm going to try to scrub at this with my q-tip might take a little bit of muscle to do this because it's um you know, the paint is kind of dried a little bit so it's a little harder to pull the paint off once it tacks up um, but yeah use as many q-tips as you have to and scrub a little bit you should be able to get um, pretty much anything off of this if you scrub hard enough um, and you can use Gamsol also on, on the tip of the Q-tip if your paint dries so much that you can't actually lift off the tone anymore. Um, this is another part where this like there's a line here that uh, needs to turn into a tone. So you have to look at that and see actually uh, which direction that transition is going in. Um, it looks like it's going to the right, right, because the light's coming from that, that direction. So I'm just taking the dry brush and I'm pulling and dragging that outline in this way, that way. Okay, so now, right, we see it's kind of a tonal transition and uh, you can adjust that tonal transition with a Q-tip if you've gone too dark somewhere or you've dragged it out too far into the lights. But what we want is um, kind of the lighter part of the pumpkin to be here on the right. And it should be kind of darkening as it goes into this uh, little pocket right here. Um, and if you want to, if you need to, you can even kind of take a little bit of uh, paint on your brush and add a little darkness here. Um, but just be careful that you don't go too dark. You know, it may not, um, you may not want it to be like pitch black there. Uh, so on the other side, uh, we have this kind of line. Now this part of this is going to be a transition again. So um, I'm actually going to use my Q-tip to soften this tone here. And so now this is a tonal transition. And um, the only part that I'm leaving really dark is this little cast shadow that comes from the stem um, on the top of the pumpkin here. Okay, 
So now um, I'm going to show you guys kind of how we can add our highlights. Um, so we're not really done doing the dark tones, but I, I just want to kind of show you guys how this works. So because um, we already have a tone. Um, sorry, I've got to adjust where my brushes are here. Getting a little disorganized. Um, so we already, yeah, we already have a, a mid-tone in here, right? We started with that tone. So um, to get the little highlights, right, there's two of them kind of like right here and right here. These are the really strong ones. There's kind of another small one around here somewhere, but uh, I want to first focus on these two. Now, if I just take my Q-tip and start kind of rubbing, I, I can probably get quite a bit of this paint off. However, um, the paint is kind of dried quite a bit. So... Um, what you can do if that happens and you really can't scrub hard enough, um, just take a little bit of Gamsol. In fact, you could kind of maybe just put a little bit in the cap like this, um, or you can, you know, take a clean Q-tip and kind of like just sort of dip it in there a little bit, wet the tip of the Q of the Q-tip. So I got a little bit of Gamsol on that, and then um, you don't want to put this directly on the canvas like this because it's it's got too much um, Gamsol in it. So I'm gonna kind of put this against the paper towel to kind of make it not so saturated and wet but it still has a little gamsol on it and then I'm going to pull off some of that tone right you see how much brighter uh, that happens right so this will help you if your paint starts to kind of dry and you can't get that off now um, that's got kind of wet round uh, or wet wet edges around the sides of those highlights so I'm gonna switch now to a clean dry q-tip and I'm going to kind of dry and soften around the outer edges of that highlight okay so this is gonna let you kind of like blend the transition from the um, from the highlight here into those mid-tones because it's not really like a super sharp edge and it definitely doesn't have a, a dark edge going around the highlight. So it's kind of like we lift it out and then we kind of rub it in. And then it will kind of soften around the edges and kind of even things out a little bit so it doesn't feel so, so sharp and dramatic. You can always go and pull out the whites again. If, so if you start to like rub this in and it darkens your highlight a little too much, um, we can always go back and do that over again. So, um, but for right now, that's that's good for now. I'm just going to kind of leave those highlights. Um, maybe, uh, maybe I'll just smooth them out a little bit more. But yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that and fix those again later. Um, I want to kind of keep running through the rest of the painting here. Um, so I'm using this Q-tip right now just to kind of try to lift up some more of the uh, mid-tones around this highlight because generally there's a lot of light hitting the side of the uh, of the pumpkin. So you still have this uh, this highlight right here, but the the brightest part outside of that is like right against this edge. So I'm just gonna kind of lift up as much tone there as I can. Um, right here, I'm also going to take this Q-tip and try to just lighten up or eliminate this outline right here. Because um, again, remember, there's no, there's really no such thing as an outline. There's just tonal differences with an edge. So what's eventually going to happen here is the, the pumpkin at this point is actually a little bit lighter than the background. Um, so I'm either going to have to darken the background a little bit or lighten the pumpkin here. And I'm not really sure which one I would have to do yet, but for right now, I'm just gonna kind of erase the outline by rubbing across like this. And even if that outline never comes back, um, I know because of this edge here and this edge here that they, they connect, right? So um, don't necessarily even have to define that edge if you don't want to, because we've defined that edge elsewhere. All right, so yeah, and I'm, and I'm just using this Q-tip to kind of reshape things along the outer contour edge. What's nice about this is that it softens the outer edge of the pumpkin. And um, you kind of want a soft edge on anything that's turning. The soft uh, outline edge kind of helps it 
turn a little bit more. If it's too sharp, it can look like a paper cutout. So um, yeah, usually you want kind of softer edges, especially edges that are further back from us, like this back edge right here. I can use the Q-tip to kind of soften that, kind of puts it slightly out of focus and makes it feel a little further away from us than other edges that are sharper. Again, just using my Q-tip to soften some of these core shadow edges and maybe change a little bit of the shapes of these shadows that I see, make little adjustments. Um, I had mentioned a little while ago that there's another, like a third uh, highlight right here. It's kind of connected in a way to um, a dark edge that sits there. So I'm gonna try to draw that dark edge first. Um, this is my eight brush uh, flat and I'm just gonna kind of like get it has some paint on it so I'm gonna kind of wipe some of it off there um, but there should still be some paint left over and what I can do is just kind of use that I gently kind of dab around here to get this sort of like little shadow uh, crease edge right here because the um, the highlight that I want to add here is on the right side of this edge like right here so I'm gonna do this first it'll help me kind of map out and position where the um, where the highlight should go. And then I can add the highlight once I get that in. So again, um, you can you can use a little Gamsol on a Q-tip if your um, canvas is dried up a bit and you can't really lift out tones anymore. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab a Q-tip here. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of wet it in the Gamsol. And I'm going to uh, make sure that it's not like super wet. I don't want it to be dripping. Um, that would not be good because then I'll have Gamsol dripping down my canvas. And I don't want that. I'm just going to like gently kind of like kind of scrape a little bit. That little highlight that's right there. And uh, I'm going to use the dry clean side now to kind of smooth that out a little bit. And then we got that highlight. And the highlight, if I really want, I can kind of keep dragging it up the left edge of that shadow, kind of scrub it into existence there. All right, so now we have that little highlight. And if you see any other highlights, like there's sort of one uh, right here, you can try using a similar technique or just try rubbing as much as you can with the Q-tip. The highlights, they are going to get a little bit uh, darker as they roll this way. Um, all the really bright ones are going to be those two um, that are kind of on the right side. Okay, so I'm going to go back to some dry brushing um, and kind of adding details as I go. Uh, so here, there's kind of an edge here that I didn't uh, have originally because it wasn't a very strong, big form. But now I'm going to start getting into those little small details and and start adding some of these little lines in. Now these aren't really lines, remember they're transitions, so they're all gradients with an edge. So um, I kind of make the line that I drag down like this to get the tonal transition. And then uh, I'm going to add a little more paint, have the core shadow kind of crawl up this edge a little bit. Um, there's kind of another line here that we can add. Yeah, so a lot of this is just dry brush. I don't want to put too much paint down because um, the transparency of the paint or the thinness of the paint is kind of what creates the, um, the uh, it kind of controls the tone that I put down, whether lighter or darker. Okay, so now we got a lot of those little nice uh, details in there. Okay, so the rest of this is really just kind of fine tuning and getting some of the smaller details. Um, so. You're going to be kind of doing a combination of um, adding darks with your brush 
and then pulling out lights when needed with your Q-tips. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about what's going on in here right now. Um, like as far as like, like this line, for example, it, it kind of keeps going in here, but um, anything that's in the shadow right now really doesn't have to be detailed at all. Um, I'm going to really focus all of my detail really in the light masses and then the shadows. I'm going to let them kind of go relatively flat. So I'm not going to include like necessarily every detail in there. Um, yeah, because I, I kind of like the look of having, you know, the light masses be really detailed and the shadows kind of being simplified because um, it, it, force, it just lets you kind of focus more on the details and the lights then because you're not distracted by the, the shadow details. So it's kind of an artistic preference. Um, but it's it's also a way of just kind of simplifying and making our job a little easier here. So definitely focus on the lights now uh, when it comes to like building your textures. Uh, look very, very carefully. This is all observation. Um, you know, when I first start the painting, I'm really kind of zoomed out in my approach. So I'm kind of looking at the overall. I step back a lot from my painting. Um, to look at it from a distance and see how things are, are looking kind of on the whole. Um, but at this point, I'm really now just kind of like looking at little focus areas. Now I'm still stepping back every so often. Um, like right now I'm going to step back and just kind of look at the painting from a little bit of a distance um, and do a comparison to my source image. Because um, when you're up close, you know, and you're doing these detail areas, it's really easy to lose sight of the overall. And uh, you might be making some like big mistakes that you're just not realizing because of your proximity to the canvas. So definitely, um, definitely step aside from, from time to time and let yourself look at things from a distance. Give yourself breaks too, um, like short breaks, because we can't let the painting dry on us right now. But, um, you know, definitely take a break every so often just for a couple minutes, come back to it. Um, it'll, it'll give you fresh eyes. So taking breaks is good. Um, yeah, and then get back into the details, right? Um, on this side here, I'm kind of darkening the shadow side a little bit because, uh, you know, at this point I'm looking at the background versus the pumpkin, and the, the pumpkin is a little darker than the background. That's why I see the edge here, right? So my painting right now, um, we kind of blended them together some time ago, and so now I have to kind of go back in and uh, distinguish these two, and I'm not going to do that by really lightening the background. Um, instead, I've decided I will do that by darkening the pumpkin. Okay, so that goes a little bit darker here. Um, and the pumpkin's a little darker here than it is here because on the bottom, the, the ground is able to reflect a lot of light into the pumpkin because there's a surface there underneath it, right? Um, there's not really a, a wall or another surface anywhere nearby here that's going to bounce light into our pumpkin. So, um, uh, so that means that it's going to be a little bit darker on that left side. So I'm just, I'm taking my brush right now and I'm kind of swiping diagonally or uh, kind of to the side. The reason I'm doing that is because the glare is coming from my, uh, my window is coming in from the right. And so if I do vertical brush strokes, you can see um, it kind of creates a glare. If I go in the direction that my um, light's coming from that's on my canvas, then the glare kind of goes away. So if your light comes from the top, you can do a lot of vertical strokes and that kind of hides your, um, your glare. If your light's kind of coming from a window from the side, you know, find out where that light's coming from, in my case, this direction, and you can kind of gently, um, just with a dry brush, you know, just kind of pull the paint this way a little bit and it kind of removes all the glare. So see, now you can see what I did here much more uh, clearly than what it looked like before. Yeah, glare is always a, a problem we have to deal with with uh, oil painting.
Yeah, so right here, I'm using my Q-tip to again kind of lift out some of the reflective lights here. Uh, I want to be careful that this reflective light here, although it's, it is brightening, it does not want to get as dark as like my tones up here. So you got to be a little careful about this. Uh, it's, a lot of people overdo reflective lights and make them too bright. Remember, it's still in the shadow mass. So that means it's still dark relative to the light mass tones. But you, you can use a Q-tip like this to lift out some of the, the lights that you see in here. Just don't go overboard with it. Okay, so I'm going to go into the stem now. And um, I'm going to try to uh, get some of the details that we see in there. So um, a lot of it's just kind of going to be darkening a little bit on this, this uh, left edge right here so that we still see the edge on the left and it separates from the background. Um, there's sort of like a top uh, part, I, like these little cords or whatever that kind of seem to be a little bit darker than other parts in the shadow mass. So I'm just kind of darkening those. Um, there's kind of this line or whatever that's like kind of right here. Uh, drags up toward the top like that. Uh, I'm going to use a Q-tip right now to lift out this highlight on the top of the stem. Um, and I'm, I rotate the Q-tip as I do this because it keeps it on a clean side. Eventually you'll have to kind of flip over to the Q, the other end of the Q-tip. Right, You probably want to keep this clean as much as you can. Right, so once it gets dirty, you got to like kind of switch. And yeah, I'm going to use this also to just kind of like lift out some of the, there's like two little light strips that drag in here on the side. Right, so that's a little fine tuning of the details there. Um, yeah, this, this part's in light, so um, again, I'm going to switch. Q-tips. Uh, this is a transitioning tone, so I'm going to use the Q-tip to smooth that out a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and I can also use that to kind of lighten this back part here if I want to get this part a little brighter. And then I'm just going to go back to um, adding some of the darks that are inside of the shadow shape of the stem here. So there's kind of like another faint little edge I see here. Um, it definitely darkens like in a little pocket right here on the left. Uh, this this S curve is kind of down to here. Okay, so now the stem is really starting to pop, right? We really start to get the uh, the details there. Okay, so it's all a balance of light and shadow. Um, you kind of just, at this point, you have to kind of keep just looking and, um, you know, like looking for things that may be a little bit too dark, things that are a little bit too light. Um, and all of that is just kind of like light or dark relative to what, like the background or um, other things. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to see, is this darker or is the background darker, right? At this point, is the background darker or is it the pumpkin? You know, there's kind of like the pumpkin's darker, the background's lighter. Here, the pumpkin's lighter, the background's darker. Um, what about like right here? Why do I see this edge? Uh, really, it's because the ground here is a little bit darker. So... If I can kind of like bring a little bit of tone into here, you know, with a, a little bit of a lighter edge on the pumpkin, you know, I can start to define that edge. So instead of just leaving it as a as an edge that kind of vanished uh, mysteriously into the, the pumpkin, I can actually define that edge now. All right, so the pumpkin's lighter, the background there is darker. Okay, I'm just going to kind of finish up with a couple uh, more textures, but uh, basically this is this is pretty much just about finished. So again, using a lot of just uh, 
dry brushing. I'm going to kind of find these little dark edges here um, and try to keep them like there's they're not lines they're they're transitions. They're just very fast transitions. All right, so that's dark on the um, kind of going and transitioning to the right, uh, but right on the left here, there's kind of like a little highlight. And so I'm going to use the Q-tip, not with any Gamsol or anything, but just just using the Q-tip and some pressure against the canvas to kind of create that little light edge. Okay, and then kind of behind that, uh, there's kind of a couple little dark patches here. This is going to create sort, sort of a topographical texture on my pumpkin. And all this stuff is just soft because they're shadows. And the shadows are pretty much always, always soft, except for some parts of cast shadows. And if any of that goes too dark, you know, control that with your Q-tip. You can always kind of lift up gently on any of these shapes to either soften them or to lighten them a little bit if they go too dark. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. That's the underpainting of a pumpkin. Okay, so I'm just going to turn it a little bit so you guys can kind of see the... Um, you know, see it without the glare, kind of what that looks like. Um, I, I did avoid doing the dark edge that's coming down in here. Um, if you really, really want to, you know, you could take a little bit of dark paint and kind of pull that in. Um, but I just don't think it's really necessary because it's in the shadows and, you know, we just don't really usually see a lot of details in the shadows, you know. Things that we can see are in the light, so we usually focus our attention there more. Um, but yeah, so we got all this nice texture here. Um, you know, there's probably a little bit more that I could still do to this um, in terms of just kind of really like focusing on a little small area at a time and just kind of like really noodling in all the details and stuff. Um, but this is fine. And, uh, you know, we got enough texture. The, the overall light and shadow mass tones are good. Um, so if you have something like this, you have a pretty good underpainting now. Okay. So that's it. And then uh, in the future, when we do underpaintings, it's going to be more of a preliminary thing that we do um, in preparation for applying color over the top. OK, so that's it. OK, so the last thing we need to talk about before uh, we wrap this all up is just um, kind of like how long this is going to take to dry um, and what you should do with it in the meantime. And then um, I want to go here and kind of just show you how I clean up and stuff because that's that's an important part of painting. Um, so this painting, uh, it's an underpainting. Uh, we didn't use any like slow drying paints or mediums or anything like that. In fact, we used really fast drying stuff like uh, I used burnt umber. Um, you guys probably used raw umber. Either way, those are fast dryers. And uh, we also mixed a lot of Gamsol with it. So this should dry within really a day. Um, if you want to accelerate the drying a little bit more, you can maybe put this um, on like your dashboard of your car, leave it in your car for like a day or, or like a few hours, and um, it'll probably be dry to the touch uh, pretty quickly if you do that. So heat and air is going to dry this faster, but um, if you do none of that stuff, it's still going to dry really quickly. This, this underpainting will dry definitely by tomorrow. Um, as far as the cleanup here, um, I definitely made a little bit of a mess. So um, things like your paper towels and your Q-tips, you can just throw those away. There's really no point in keeping any of that stuff at this point. Um, if you have any clean Q-tips left over, you can save it for the next time you do a painting. Um, and I wouldn't just go putting these back into your Q-tip box unless you were 100% sure that these are really clean because you don't want to put these in your ears or something and then, um, then you have paint in your ear. But yeah, all these can go away. Um, and then what we need to do is uh, clean our brushes and our Gamsol. Um, so before you do any of that, uh, let's clean off the palette real quick. And um, you want to kind of first take your palette knife and start scraping all this paint off right here so that you get the big globs and stuff off of your palette. 
Um, and you should do this before your paint dries. Now, if your paint does dry, um, because you're on a glass palette, it's fine. Um, if, if that happens, you need to take a razor blade, like a flat razor from a container like this, and scrape it. Um, so this isn't dry, so I don't really need to do this, but just, just like for future reference for you guys, um, if I had let that all dry and I can't get it off with my, my palette knife, you can take a, a razor blade and because it's on glass, you can just kind of scrape paint off that way. Okay. Um, but since this is a little bit dry right now, what I'm going to do, or I'm um, sorry, since it's still a little bit wet, um, what I'm going to do is take paper towel and I'm just going to put a little bit of Gamsol in it. So if you go into your container um, and you have Gamsol in there, you can kind of dip it in there. And uh, if not, you can just kind of take a little bit of your Gamsol here, put it on the paper towel, and you'll see this starts to really kind of wipe down and clean off your, um, your palette quite a bit. Okay, and you can, um, you can reapply Gamsol if you need to, but just a little bit will probably be fine uh, for this part here. So going to just kind of clean this off here. That way I don't have any paints that's going to dry on it. Um, you can, you know, get another dry paper towel and just kind of wipe that off extra clean. Um, the paint that's on here on the, the palette knife, I'm just going to wipe that off. Um, if you did the, um, same thing with your razor blade. You might want to try to carefully pull this paint off of here too. Do not cut yourself, please. Okay, and then um, all this stuff can basically go away into your box again. Uh, and then we got the brushes to clean. So first thing we want to do is uh, just take a paper towel and kind of wipe off any paint that happens to be on here. Okay, so that's getting most of the paint off. Because um, if you just kind of take this and dip it into your Gamsol tank, um, a lot of that paint's going to go to the bottom, and it'll get really gunky and goopy really quickly. So probably want to do this first. Um, and when you when you paint with color, eventually um, you don't want to keep dipping this in the Gamsol too much. Um, so like when we're painting uh, with color later on, we're going to just be kind of wiping off our brushes uh, a lot and then dipping into other colors. If we're going from like a really light color to a dark color, we might want to clean it off in the brush tank. But um, for the most part, uh, you are going to be just wiping off paint. Right? So most of the, the really heavy paint is now off of both of those brushes. Um, I also had used this brush, which kind of has some paint on it. Um, and again, I'm just going to try to get some of this off with the paper towel before I start using Gamsol to clean the rest of it. Okay, so this thing, um, I've been having a hard time opening this because I haven't opened it in a while. There we go, I got it. Okay, so um, there's a little bit of Gamsol in there. It's been a while, so I'm going to kind of fill this up a little bit with some more Gamsol. Um, there's a screen in there, and so when you do fill up your Gamsol, it should go a little bit above that screen. Now, um, not gonna, you're not really ever going to dump this stuff out. Um, what's good, what will happen, because that screen is there, um, is all of the gunk over time will eventually settle at the bottom and you'll kind of always have kind of clean Gamsol on the top, uh, or at least like kind of relatively clean Gamsol. Um, it's going to be a little brown, but it's not going to be like super dirty. Um, and when you clean, when you want to clean your brush tank, eventually you'll have to do this. You want to kind of like, you know, let it all settle for like a day. When you're ready, open this thing up. Um, take what's in here, the, just the liquid, and kind of slowly pour it into another cup. Um, a glass jar, not a plastic cup, but like a, a something that's glass that you're not going to drink out of. Um, and then put that to the side. Then you'd have to take uh, gloves, put on blue nitrile gloves, and you got to you gotta try to kind of get the screen out of here, um, or at least flip it on its side 
and kind of with the glove kind of go in and kind of scoop out some of the gunk. It's actually a real pain to clean these types of uh, cleaning tanks, um, but it can be done. You can actually pull that screen out. It's just it's just really hard to pull the coil out. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll have to at least kind of, you can at least get it on its side and then that will let you kind of get into the bottom and kind of scrape out some of the bigger gunk things. Um, no, you don't have to worry about it right now because, you know, this is your first painting. You guys probably haven't really done this to your, um, your, your jar doesn't look like this yet. But when it gets to that point, um, yeah, you kind of, you dump the Gamsol into a separate container. Um, then you take gloves and, and stuff and you kind of like get the gunk out and throw that away. Um, and then you put the old Gamsol back in. And then you can top off some of your Gamsol um, with clean, uh, you know, top it off with some clean Gamsol. So um, to clean the brushes, though, um, I'll start with the small ones here. So this, this, the the coil is here so that the brush doesn't go into the gunk that rests at the bottom. And what you want to do is just kind of brush this against the coil. I'm going to kind of turn it so you can see the coil there. All right. So I'm brushing against the coil. Kind of wiggle it around, a little circular, side to side, forward and backward motions. And then um, make sure to do this. Okay, so this is going to get the excess um, Gamsol that's on your brush and kind of put it back in there. Otherwise, you're going to be running out of Gamsol all the time. Okay, so that now is clean. Um, now, after this, we're gonna, you're going to want to uh, wash these with soap and water. So you're not really done yet once you do that. But this is this one's pretty clean right now. Um, this one I've wiped it down with a paper towel. I'm now going to kind of go in here and brush this up against the coil in my Gamsol tank. And again, you want to kind of press this up against the, uh, the edge here and get the excess Gamsol that's in the brush to go back into the tank. Then you can kind of wipe that down, put that aside. Okay, then I got the uh, the bigger brush here. So same thing, just it's a bigger brush. So I don't want to have this brush absorb too much of my Gamsol. Um, so I'm just going to kind of like wiggle this around like this. And then again, when I get to the end here, um, this one, just press it against the inner edges of your Gamsol tank. Try not to like brush out like this because you're going to splatter stuff everywhere, right? Like if I do this, you see it splatters onto my um, recently cleaned palette and it could splatter onto other things that maybe you don't want Gamsol splatter on. So just kind of press it, press it, um, and just kind of like get as much of that to go back into the tank as possible. And then um, after that, all you got to do here is uh, wipe this off just like the other ones. I, I usually would probably use a paper towel for this, um, but you can also do it against your rag if you have one and just kind of squeeze and press uh, as much of what's in there out. Now you can just see by the color, I mean some of this is the, Gam the Gamsol has actually got this color, but um, there is still some paint in this. So all of these brushes that I cleaned off, they still have a little bit of paint in the brush. So they're not actually fully cleaned off yet. Um, so what you're going to need to do now is go to the sink and wash these with soap and water. You can just use dish soap. Um, they have actual soap that's made for brushes, and you can use that stuff too. I, I usually just use dish soap. You can use hand soap even. Um, just some kind of soap. Um, put a little bit of soap in your hand and kind of brush this into your hand like that so it all foams up and gets some of the... It'll be like a brown foam that comes out. Um, and then rinse it off. And then, um, and then when, you're, when, you're, when it's wet, after you've rinsed it, what you should do for these flat brushes is kind of put it into a paper towel like this and, and kind of like kind of like press sort of like that to get it to a shape that's back like this again. Okay, so it's not like fraying out. Okay. Next time you use the brush when it's dry, it'll probably be stiff a little bit, so you're gonna to have to kind of wiggle it and loosen it up. Um, you can maybe even dip it in Gamsol to do that when you first start painting again. Um, but this will keep it in its shape until you use it next time. So after you've washed these all with soap, you can just kind of put them back into um, whatever container you keep all your brushes in and you'll be ready to go for the next painting.